Hi, so today Apple decided to make my life just a little bit harder, uh, like they always do by giving customers uh, shitty estimates. So they told a customer that this machine only needed a screen, and then the guy calls and says, Apple said I needed a screen, how long is it going to take? And we say, if it's a screen, one hour, but we like to do our own estimate because they are often wrong. And this, this guy, was, you know, he was a douchebag, so he, uh, he hung up before we could actually finish the fucking sentence. Now, I have the sleep sensor unplugged, and this computer is on, so one of the things that I want to show you here is why it won't work with another screen and why it drives me nuts when they do their own bullshit-ass estimates. So when you, what you're going to see over here is you only get 17 volts on backlight. Now tell me, how the fuck is this shit going to work with a new screen when you're only sending 17 volts to the screen? It's not. It's not a screen. I plugged in a new screen. It didn't work. And the guy's going on, how am I supposed to live three to five days without my laptop? He, and he said, who would live three to five days without their laptop? My answer is if you have a dead motherboard. Like, what? What, what, what are you going to do with this? You, you can't use it. I mean, really. And, yeah, I don't, I don't tell people same day, even if it is a backlight, because... You know, why, why, make the, why make life a nightmare? It's hell for yourself. So we're going to go through fixing this. Uh, I'm going to show you what I do. So let's just turn it off, turn it back on again. And first thing to do here is take some measurements and check out why this is messing up. So first things first, since we have that voltage on backlight, obviously the fuse is good. If the fuse were blown, you would not have 17 volts on output, or 12, or anything. Now the fact that it's 17, it's the lowest amount that it would go through while boosting is occurring. So we're going to go through and make sure that everything here measures the way it's supposed to. So the first thing to go through here on the screen is going to be backlight enable. So backlight enable is right over here. And that has to work. That has to be 3 volts. If that's not 3 volts, we won't get what we need. So let's check backlight enable. Three volts. Okay, so backlight enable is there. Now the next thing to check, since it's telling it to actually turn the backlight on, is the PWM signal. So the PWM signal is what tells the machine what brightness to set. So if the PWM signal is too low or not present, it's not going to turn the brightness up, even if the LED boost circuit is actually working. So we're going to turn on the oscilloscope and let's see what we get over there. Let's try to move this so that you can actually see it. Let's zoom a little bit on that. All righty. And we're going to measure. And what the hell, just for fun, I'll even show you what I'm measuring. Let's get microscope on. I don't have the voltage here set right. So we're going to set it to 1 volt so we can actually see what the PWM looks like. Uh, this, this obviously means I haven't touched the ground properly. Well, sadly, the ground probe to my oscilloscope finally broke and then hit the bucket, which is why that looks like complete and utter shit. That's not what that's supposed to look like. So that's just another day in me trying to do a video and it not working. So when I detach the ground, I don't even get a difference. Anyway, but I see what I need to see. So pretty much, even though that, that is a complete pile of shit, I can tell that there's actually a PWM signal, which means that the light <laughs> should be on, which leads me to probably bad LED driver. So... We're just going to go on to replace the LED driver. Yoink. Fail. Computer.
the LED, LED drivers are exactly where they're supposed to be, and a little pouch on the floor under my desk under a cable. An important thing to take note of here is that this LED driver is oriented differently on different boards. So it's important that you remember the way it's oriented. Obviously, if you put it on the wrong way, bad, bad things happen. This is the wrong soldering tip for the job. I should be using the flat one. I just don't feel like changing it. And the, this is so small an area that it's not worth changing the tip for the cleaning. I'll be able to do a perfect job without. This is This is done. I have Q-tips, so I'm using a paper towel. Not even a good look bounty paper towel, one of those cheap ass sparkle paper towels that you get off of off of Amazon. I can't believe I keep leaving the brush in the front. Uh, rub around that ESD safe towel. Clean. Start aligning this push down and make sure it's actually stuck wherever you put it. It's hard to do that because when you push down, when you push back up, it's like it's going to move around. It's a pain in the ass like that. Okay, now that I got that nasty flux there, let's put the fume extractor right up close. And time for heating.
So yeah, I'm, a, I'm currently a victim of my hot air station not getting hot. That didn't melt the way it should. As I said in the last few videos I did, this thing has just not been heating lately the way it's supposed to. So once you heat it and you can see it move back and forth like I just did, like you see how I poked it, it moved, but then the air itself is actually moving it back and forth. So you could see the chip was swaying like that, 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 that. That's how you know that it's actually been soldered properly. But if it's not moving back and forth and doing that motion, you probably didn't solder it properly. You should be able to get that because then you know that all the balls are fluid, all the balls are liquidous, and that you've melted everything. So, yeah, I'm at eight right now, which should be actually burning the chip. So as soon as I touch the chip, it should be burning because I'm at a too high a temperature and it was still, and it wasn't even melting it. So I need to replace the heating element in my FR801. That's something that I, I keep saying I'm going to do. And the real world keeps getting in the way of me having the time. Ugh. One of the, I mean, I know I'm going to have the time once that thing doesn't heat at all. I'm going to have a lot of, lot of spare time left. So it really is something I should do immediately. And what do you know? The screen that Apple wanted to replace is fucking fine. And responsible for another customer coming in and screaming and thinking I'm trying to rip them off and wondering why it's going to take longer and blah, blah, blah. Here's what it is. So, um, lesson of the day, uh, never trust the genius bar because they're not geniuses. A lot of the time, they're pretty fucking dumb. All right, so here's another thing that bothers me about this. So we got the machine working. Now, this, this person came in and said that we had told him it's possible to fix in one hour. This was because he had told us. He guaranteed it was the screen. He knew it was the screen, you know, blah, blah, blah. Now, he comes in, and it's a motherboard issue. And since the weekend is coming up, and there's nobody really here to do that on the weekend or do this type of troubleshooting, we say three to five days. We always tell people, you know, two to four, three to five when it comes to board repairs because, let's face it, you really never know what's going to go wrong. You never know when you need to order stuff, and you never know when it's going to be a rabbit hole to hell. And he goes on and on and on about how I, who in God's name could be three to five days without their computer. That's ridiculous. Why would it take so long? And needless to say, like this, yeah, how many places in the U.S. actually do these board-level repairs where they can do them? on camera and explain everything inside of 13 minutes. Like, yeah. But beside, that's beside the point. So I did something that I usually tell you not to do. So once somebody starts acting like that, I will simply not take their money. I'll give it back to them. Because what you've done is you've shown me that you are going to become a problem. You've shown me you're going to be a problem. And you've, you've really just shown me that you have no general respect for us or anything that we're doing by acting in that manner. We take it in any way. And just because he, he just, I just wa just one one time I broke my rule. I always do things in the order that I get them. I look at everything in the order that I get them. I may decide that because this is miserable, you're going to the bottom of the pile, but I always look at the jobs in the order that they actually come in. It's just basic human fairness. He tells me how he needs it for work, how he just flew in, how everything stopped working right after he flew, you know, flew here from internationally, and now this is just a nightmare. Yeah, I feel just a little, little, little bit bad. And this, this is the problem when you actually start feeling bad for people. This is why in these videos, and also in, with people that I know, I encourage you to look at this board as money. Look at it as a piece of silicone. Don't look at it like the, you, the people using it. Don't look at it like this person has their, what, their work on it. This person has their life on it. This person has their baby pictures on it. You look at it like it, it's just another job. It's just another board in the pile. Because if you start looking at it like that, then you become emotionally invested in the jobs. You become emotionally invested in trying to figure it out. But more importantly, you also will start to care when they start to do things like what I'm going to say next. So I call him to tell him, listen, I understand that this was a priority for you, so I actually pushed you, you know, we were able to get it done today. He goes, what do you mean? You said it would be three to five days. And I go, with board issues, it can take th up to three to five days, but we can figure it out sooner. I actually decide to be honest. You know, again, like most people when dealing with a douche, they're going to take, they're going to purposely call you in a few days to make it look like it was harder than it actually was. And that's one of the things that we try not to do here. So one of the differences between us and other places all very often is instead of lying to people to get the point across, we simply make them humble. So, you know, we make them, instead of, instead of having to lie and cheat to get them to feel a certain way, we will simply explain everything the way it is. And if you decide to be a douchebag, we will make you feel bad for it. She's like, come on, man, that was easy. You, you figured it out like nothing. You're still going to charge me that for it? And I said, you know, I said sir, 
you're welcome. I'm going to take this off, and you're welcome to figure it out. And if you can figure it out in under three to five days, I'll give it to you for free. You know, I, I even said most people are when when they deal with somebody like you. And he goes, "What do you mean like me?" I said, "Impatient and disrespectful." What they're going to do is they're going to purposely call you in a few days just to make it seem harder, but we don't lie to you. Usually people are actually happier when they're pushed to the front of the line and have that courtesy that they were done faster than somebody else. Usually if somebody comes in and their board is fixed within 30 minutes of arriving here, that is something that, uh, that, that, that they would enjoy. But I can see that you're not one of those people, so what I can do is I can remove this chip and I will put it back on on Wednesday since that's what we agreed to. You are correct. And he goes, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I'll be right there. I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, you are sorry. And, and it is, it's one of those things. You know, again, I'm not going to start lying to people so that they, they, they I, I don't, I don't want to start lying to people and making it seem like it's that much harder than it actually is just because they're going to be a douchebag. Like, if I had taken five days, he would have said, what? You mean I'm five days without a computer? That's bullshit. I do it fast. It's like, what? You mean you did it that fast? It's bullshit. It's like, either way, you don't win. So one of the points I want to get across with this video Lying is not, it's not, not always the proper thing to do. Again, I've talked in other videos about why technicians lie to customers. I understand it. But really, honestly speaking, it is not the thing to do. The thing that you should be aiming to do is keep your customers humble. And again, you, have to, you, you can't explain it like passive aggressively or like a wise ass. Because again, when I'm doing these videos, I'm usually doing them with the... I'm trying to get a point across, so I'm a little bit more animated than I am in the real world. I'm a little bit more exaggerated. Um, you know, one example of this is cursing, you know. Believe it or not, in the real world, I actually don't curse that much, if not at all. But my point here is the whole idea is to keep them humble. It's not to lie to them. It's not to make things seem harder than they are. It's not to lie and say that you did something different. I know if you're charging, if you're charging somebody you know, $1,000 to replace a single 0402 capacitor on a board for a crane that operates a crane or something like that, you need to be honest and happy about what it is you're doing and what you're charging. And... That, that, that's it. Like whatever business model you have, you need to be proud of it and you can't be like, you can't be lying and cheating and scheming just because people are trying to beat you down on price or make it seem like you're ripping them off and blah, blah, blah. You really do have to make them humble. So in this case, somebody comes in, they complain, I did the wrong thing, I push you to the front of the line, I get your board repair done on camera in 13 minutes, I call you within 20 to 30 minutes to tell you it's completed and you're actually mad. So again, this, this is one of those things like I finish it in three days, you're mad it took three days. I'm without my machine. You take one day, you're mad you're without your machine for one day. I do it in, in an hour, you're mad that I'm charging you. It's like, you know, what the, you, you have to realize that with some people, you're never going to win, and it's not worth lowering yourself to their level. It's not worth lying. It's not worth becoming the same very piece of shit that they are uh, just to deal with them. It's, it's not worth lowering yourself to that level. It really isn't. You know, you should, again, simply make people humble in, in when you're dealing with them. It, it's not about... You know, it's not about lying to them. It's not about making shit up. And again, you know, I, I didn't even bother going through the whole idea of, uh, you know, yes, it is simple enough to do in 13 minutes after like 17 years of electronics. You, you, you just lay it on the table and that's it. I'll take it off. And if you can reattach it, if you can do, if you can do any estimate with any of the equipment that I have here, by all means, you can have it free.